Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now for the past few days I've been using this, the Ryzen 3 2200G APU. With onboard Vega 8 graphics it seems like an ideal choice for budget gamers and today I want to talk about it from a budget user's perspective. By that I mean that I used mine with 8GB of 2400MHz DDR4 as opposed to the recommended 3200MHz DDR4 as I felt this better represents what you may go for if you're trying to put together a new build on a tighter budget. As an APU, it lets you choose how much system RAM you want to dedicate to the onboard GPU. In my case, I opted for the maximum or 2GB. This left me with 6GB of system memory for Windows and other things. The first thing I want to mention is content creation, as I've been known to make a few videos here and there. In Premiere Pro, the 2200G renders videos a lot quicker than my previous Ryzen 3 1200, and with a Cinebench score of 536, it's no surprise. Immediately, its processing power makes the Ryzen 3 1200 a pointless purchase for new system builders, even if you won't be using the onboard Vega 8 graphics of this chip. If you want a cheap system for editing, then this thing isn't the quickest in the world, but it will handle Premiere Pro and Sony Vegas and similar programs without any issues. The main purpose of today's video though, is gaming. At first I was a little concerned that my cheap memory choice may hinder performance, especially as we now only had 6GB of system RAM to play with, but at both 1080p and 720p this thing proved impressive, even when testing it out with my demanding game library. My capture card decided to give up a couple of days ago, so I'll be doing things 2009 YouTube style. I will point out now that trying to use onboard recording software, even things such as Microsoft's Game Capture, did cause lag and high CPU usage, so bear that in mind if you want to start making gaming videos for YouTube, as you will need an external capture card. I've started with the easiest to run of my AAA games today, and that is Overwatch. Keep an eye on the memory tab at the top left which is the VRAM and the RAM tab which is how much system memory is being used throughout today's benchmarks. At 1080p the game is perfectly playable at medium with full resolution scaling. Turning things down to low would guarantee at least 60 FPS on average but I went along with the settings that the game defaulted to when I opened it which turned out quite well. The footage is from a bot match which doesn't run too differently from an online match but the numbers are taken from three different online games. 20p meant a huge increase in the average FPS, but our 1% and 0.1% lows here mean that there was more stuttering than there was at full HD, though I have to be honest I'm not sure when this occurred as I didn't feel it during gameplay. GTA 5 is also pretty easy to run these days. Oh how I remember how much my G3258 used to struggle before numerous patches and a hefty overclock. At 1080p normal or low in every other game's terms, GTA ran flawlessly. Very impressive and if you wanted to aim for a more console like 30fps experience, higher settings would definitely be achievable. 720p increased the average and the percentile figures, though there's no need to drop to this resolution on a 1080p monitor as the game is more than playable at 1920 by 1080 the same can be said for Dirt 4. It's playable at 1080p but it will drop to the mid-30s on occasion. The average here was taken from a few solo and team races, so the frame rate will differ depending on the event but the game is playable without having to turn the settings down. 720p resolution again was the best way to play, with a buttery smooth 71 frames per second on average and increased percentile numbers. There wasn't much stutter, if any to be honest, and so far our APU is holding up well, even on slower and cheaper RAM. So let's turn things up a notch. I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Origins lately, so I just had to test it out with the Ryzen 2200G. Unsurprisingly, this half demanding, half unoptimized title ran at just 23 FPS with a lot of frame time issues at very low, but at 720p we came very close to a 30 FPS average. Take a look at how the 1% and 0.1% figures didn't really improve though. More expensive RAM and more of it may remedy this, but I still shouldn't think the game would be very playable. Battlefield 1 though, well that ran delightfully. 1080p meant a near 50 FPS average, and that low 0.1% figure was caused by a brief freeze that happened once throughout my playthrough. It's very surprising how well the game ran in fact and 720p once again proved excellent with a huge increase in numbers all around. I kept things at low for a direct comparison to full HD, but you should be able to turn things up to medium and still maintain playable numbers. But can it run Crisis, I hear you ask? Some of you even ask that almost 
after every video, in fact. Well here, yes, yes we can. Even at high settings, the once PC melting AAA beast runs at a respectable, but not perfect, 37 FPS. The only time it slowed down was when the game saved automatically and there was a slight freeze, but after that the experience was a smooth one. 720 was just the same. A smooth experience with an even better average frame rate to boot. Stay away from very high though because just like back in 2007 it is just not doable. Ghost Recon Wildlands next, another demanding open world title that can be very hard to run. At 1080p it wasn't quite playable even on low but the frame rate was still better than I expected. 720p though, well that's where things really improved. 40fps on average isn't the best but it is playable and I could happily play this game on this system all day. Medium meant 30 frames per second and that was still somewhat decent but there were more frame drops which at times proved quite distracting. Now, for The Witcher 3. This APU isn't really intended for demanding games like this which is why our average frame rate isn't very impressive at full HD. However, just like throughout most of today's tests, 720p meant a playable frame rate despite having to turn things right down. I didn't turn things down to 1024x768 as I felt the game was playable enough at 720p, but if you want a few extra frames then that would be advisable. The newest and final release today is Kingdom Come Deliverance, a CryEngine based game that is still in need of a couple of performance patches. At 1080p it was unplayable to no real surprise, but at 720p our average increased to 40fps, though the frame rate drops at this lower resolution were worse, likely because of the increased average to begin with. You'll also notice how much RAM and VRAM we're using here. Overall, this APU is great for the price. Sure you'd benefit from faster RAM and more of it, but it's nice to see that even slower DDR4 can let you take advantage of and have a great time with the onboard Vega 8 GPU. I keep telling myself that a better PC can be built for cheaper with used parts, but I have to remember that the used market doesn't and won't appeal to everyone. Looking at it from that point of view, the point of view from someone who's on a budget and wants to put together a cheap new build that can play a game or two on occasion when they feel like it, then the Ryzen 3 2200G is a great choice, even if you just want a good CPU and plan to get a separate graphics card. In my opinion it's definitely a big step forward in terms of what APUs can do and I'll be releasing a couple more videos regarding the 2200G soon as well with more of my experiences. Guys for now though thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video leave a like on it if you didn't leave a dislike on it subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.